Hi everyone, welcome. This pair of bins that you see here in the corner, they're the ones that I plan on checking in on today to give them their feeding. It was 12 days ago that each system got a tomato and a banana peel, and I figure after 12 days they're probably ready. During the last check-in, we even commented on how this system had previously exhibited some signs of the worms climbing up out of their bed, up the walls of the container, and even out onto the floor and whatnot. And guess what? It happened again. Two days ago, I come home. It was late at night already. I came down here to drop something into my collection of bedding materials, and there it was. Worms all over the floor, all over the walls of both containers, and worms crawling out. And for that matter, whatever it is that was causing these worms to do that, it was also evidently going on um, to such a degree that it was causing the worms in this black bin up here on top to do the same thing. None of my other systems were exhibiting that behavior, just these three. So I had to take the time to collect up as many worms as I could off the floor, since they were all still kind of moving. They were all alive. I was still able to return a great many of them to the bins, probably skewing the actual worm count estimates a bit in the process, but I mean, that's the least of our concerns. What was causing that behavior is what really concerns me, and I really don't know what it was, but since that behavior was going on in not only these two bins, but the bin up here too, I had to assume that maybe it had something to do with maybe me leaving the window open, maybe there was um, something to do with the weather, or I don't know, I really don't know, I don't even want to speculate, but before we get the systems up on the bench, really quick, just a few stats. So down at the bottom, you can see the whole mention of the climbing and exiting of the bin event two days ago. The other stats on these systems, 174 days of age, only, uh, only about a week away from hitting six months. And feeding number 15 is what we're attempting to get in here today after a 12-day interval since the last check-in. And I think we're probably going to go with plastic coverings because the main reason we switched to paper coverings here was because these both systems were um, observed to be a little bit overly damp but over the past few check-ins between putting paper on as top coverings and blending dry bedding materials down into the into the bin I think we've gotten to the point where the system is no longer overly damp and I'm going to protect the existing moisture content with uh, plastic covers. So, a lot of explaining. I think it's time to get these systems up on the bench and we're going to get them fed. What's on the menu for the worms today is cauliflower and it's not just the uh, it's not just the leaves and the stems that have been cut away but apparently after the um, the leaves were all removed this cauliflower was found to be no good and was reclassified from being human food to being worm food and you can already smell as it thaws because it just came out of the freezer a short while ago but it's already starting to thaw a little bit and emit some of those um, perhaps not so lovely <laughs> um, odors of when these cruciferous cruciferous I always, I always question whether I'm pronouncing that word correctly, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm always curious as to, um, you know, why this particular category of vegetable has such a pungent odor. It's in the same category as Brussels sprouts and cabbage, and I think cabbage is one of the ones that's typically um, known by most as being a little bit stinky. I don't know what this thing is. Sort of really tough object, but luckily I was able to crack it, so that kind of restores my hope and the fact that it has the potential to break down. But now I question whether I should have left that thing whole for for me to be able to possibly bump into again at some point in the future and maybe extract it if I eventually just give up hope on its potential to break down in a worm bin. Especially out here on the surface where things are a bit dry by being covered only with paper. Not too surprising, but you don't have to go too far to get down into material that's got a nice moisture content. So now, the banana peel and tomato they got last time, and I already bumped into a little bit of the, the, um, the banana. And this thin material here is very likely 
tomato skin. Because the tomatoes were frozen, I came down here and I just used my knife to cut the tomatoes in half for the most part and uh, drop them into the feeding zone that way. And with the tomato being for the most part moisture, it's not too surprising that the worms got all over it. And the banana peels seem to be coming along pretty nicely. Banana peels tend to linger in the worm bin, as do the stems, as you could probably expect. But, um, yeah, within a few check-ins, the banana peels also eventually start to vanish. Now, something we did start doing during the last check-in, which is a little bit out of character for me, is to take a lot of these corn cob bits that have been floating around in here. When we started the last check-in 12 days ago, there were three pieces of corn cob, like half, half a corn cob, that were in each of these systems. But we actually started crumbling them, started chipping away at them, breaking them, trying to reduce their size so that we're not faced with kind of a recurring dream of checking in on corn cob over and over and over again. It's just this unusual little habit I have when I put foods into my worm bins. I sometimes help the materials along by trying to fragment them into smaller bits and and other things, but somehow with the corn cobs it just seems like I have this tendency to just leave them be and let the worm bins work the material down at their own um, natural pace and speed but I've been wondering if that's a behavior I might want to start adjusting a little bit. <laughs> Just so these corn cobs can eventually vanish and not get bumped in on every time we check in to feed the wormies. So yeah, I mean, as far as the climbing behavior, just to get back to that a little bit before we go completely off the topic, you know, I started wondering, hey, do I, I need, do I need to look at what I fed all three bins where the behavior was being observed? Perhaps it was something I placed into the bins that was freaking them out. But I mean, it was well over a week since the previous check-in that that behavior was observed. In fact, these two bins and that black bin over there were both fed on the same day, 10 days prior to the climbing event. But when I checked the videos for those two check-ins, I did notice how even though potato and, um, I mean, tomato, tomato and banana peel was what was fed here in, those other, in that other system, the, uh, the feeding was different. So it wasn't the feeding or the food necessarily, I don't think. I'm fairly certain it was weather. It must have been. I mean, what else could it have been? But then... You know, that begs the question, why only these three systems reacting that way? So, whatever. I usually, um, usually do kind of get into that mindset of, geez, I would really like to know the cause so that I can steer clear of that cause in the future to not observe that type of behavior any longer. But I really don't feel like I've got enough info to definitively say that it was this or that that caused it so uh so it's a little bit of a bummer but i was glad that i was able to catch the situation and nip it in the bud at least for some of the worms and rescue them off the floor and get them back into worm bins but um i'm fairly certain that a good many of them probably lost their lives in the process which was definitely a bummer but what can you do so i've got my bedding here and i'm going to Go pretty generous, I think. We've, we've been pretty generous over the last few feedings. You can see bedding material blending in all over the place. Um, nevertheless, I've got no problem with being generous with it. I just prepared a whole bunch of shredded paper cardboard with which I restocked this prepared bedding mix, which introduces moisture and bits of leaves too. So it is a pretty nice pretty nice mix that the bed, uh, that the worms I think appreciate as bedding and onto that we can come in with their 
yummy feeding. And it might not look like much, but this thing's got some weight to it. So here was the, the stem end of it, which I cut into two pieces so that each system can get half of it. And then this was like a, uh, a pretty good sized chunk, which seemed equal, equal in size to this pretty good sized chunk. And then after that, it seemed like the majority of it was just little bits of cauliflower and leaves and stems, which I'm sure the worms will appreciate just as much as the vegetable matter itself. So hopefully they like what we're giving them here. Alrighty. And I am glad that we're going to be covering up pretty thoroughly here at the end because... <laughs> stuff already has a pretty pungent odor to it it would be a shame if we um, had to deal with that odor down here in the wormery if the worm bins were to start getting stinky but I between between you know backfilling the hole that we dug to drop this stuff into combined with the fact that we will be covering with plastic as well I think it's gonna stifle the emission of stinky odors out of these bins for the most part so I'm not too worried so like I usually do I usually use the uh, covering up of the feeding zone as an excuse to explore the outskirts of the systems a little bit just to see how things are doing out there furthest away from where the feedings have been getting applied and to me I guess the the main telltale that I'm interested in seeing is whether or not worms are occupying the material telling me that it's probably okay but you know what before we totally cover up this feeding zone i forgot that we had corn cobs and at this point i'm more than happy to continue with what we started last week which is the um the chipping away of the corn cob bits here and there as we encounter them to help them along at this point since since they are soft enough to easily bust apart I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do the same in the other bin too just to get these just to get these foods moving along rather than just perpetually being in the bins forever and ever and I do believe that once we cover up with plastic here at the end we're gonna see a lot better um, action out on the surface because worm bins that I cover with plastic remain damp I mean the material in the bins remain damp from the bottom to the top all the way through as opposed to what you see in systems that are covered with paper where the paper provides very um, limited protection from evaporation so whatever's out on the surface does have a tendency to get a little bit dry and maybe uncomfortable for the worms so I do believe by covering up oops, with uh, plastic at the end we're gonna start seeing a little bit more action out on the top surface of each system rather than just opening up the system and finding a bunch of untouched material and no worms on the top surface so um, I am very glad to see that the material has achieved a moisture level and a crumbliness which makes me feel like further drying is no longer necessary in fact, if we can just maintain this moisture level, I think the worms will be quite content. And by giving them access to the entire system, they'll, uh, they'll just be able to spread out a little bit more rather than being sort of confined to the more damp portions of the system due to the top surface being a little bit dry and inhospitable. So. I guess the only thing in, in, uh, inhospitable is what I applied to these bins when I observed the the climbing the other night. I did something that I do occasionally when I get worried that it might start happening again is I took some salty water and I used salty water to coat the rim of these two and that other system over there so as to kind of shock the worms. If they touch salt that really bothers them they don't like that you know because salt draws moisture into itself so I could I bet they could feel the moisture from their body getting sucked out by the salt as they encounter it and they pull away so um, just to try to prevent future calamities I, um, I did apply that measure to these bins a little bit of saltiness to the rim 
because you know whatever it is that's causing them to climb I'm sure it can't be nearly as bad as what can happen to them if they end up on my floor and dry out well I think we all know where that leads and it's nowhere good so I think we are done the only difference now in terms of getting these things set to go back on the shelf is the application of top covers so let's get that taken care of like so and we'll be done so keeping my fingers crossed here I'm really hoping to not see this type of behavior again I mean it, it seems to be a recurring pattern at least in this system it has happened a couple times over the past couple months at first I thought it might have been related to the large amount of bedding material that I blended into the systems possibly causing the contents of these systems to become um, uncomfortably dry and maybe that was causing the climbing but then again I didn't do anything um, drastic during the last check-in with regards to moisture at least I don't think I did so um, I'm pretty certain it might have been environmental something outside of the bins causing the behavior to um, occur in all three systems so hopefully it don't happen anymore. So that's it for the check-in, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.